Hey there, folks. How you doing today? Welcome back to the channel. Please bear with any background racket that you might hear throughout this production. Excited to show you today. Uh, we've got a brand new, just hit the market. They've been out since June. This is the first one I've seen, and I didn't see one in a store until last week, so I snagged it up. This is the Stevens 334 imported by Savage from Turkey. You might be familiar with it under its other name, the ATA Turca, Turqua. I don't know how they pronounce it. I looked on their channel. I couldn't figure out how they pronounce it, but they make these rifles in Turkey and Savage started importing them. They debuted them at SHOT Show this year, released them in June, but really didn't see them in the stores until just about a week ago. This was the first one that I found. It's chambered in the Lord's Caliber 308 Winchester. And while I've seen a couple of other like unboxing videos on these, I'm not going to make you all sit through an unboxing video. I think those are ridiculous. And anybody that's putting a picture of it in their truck saying, hey, I just got this. I don't know if they're doing it for clickbait, whatever, but I wanted to actually have some substance out here for you. So we took this thing out to the range today, topped off with not one, but two Crimson Trace optics. And for those of you that are new to the channel or are not aware that Crimson Trace is a loyal supporter of what we do here on the channel, please take a minute to listen to this word from our sponsor. If you are watching this, then you probably know that Crimson Trace has a long and reputable history producing quality laser products for the firearms industry, such as the LS250 laser saddle shown here on the Mossberg Shockwave. But did you know they now have a full line of quality accessories to include both red and green laser sights, tactical lights, electronic sights, and rifle scopes to rival other premium brands on the market today. From the novice outdoorsman to the tactical professional, Crimson Trace offers a wide range of budget-friendly to premium rifle scopes to meet your operational needs. All Crimson Trace products are backed by their no-hassle limited lifetime warranty. Check them out now and use promo code J10 to save 10% off your next purchase. All right, so now that we got all that out of the way, I've got written down here some of the specs on the rifle. The MSRP on the uh, Woodstock version of the 334 is $489. I picked this one up at Academy for $399 plus tax. They're currently only available as a right-handed action. It's a Turkish walnut stained sporter style stock. Folks, I'll, I'll put some close-ups on here. This is probably the best looking stock I've seen on a rifle that didn't cost a thousand bucks in a long time. Uh, moving right along with it, uh, the twist rate on the barrel is a 1 in 11. That's kind of odd for a 308. Most of them are 1 in 10. This one says it's 1 in 11. I did notice at the range, and we'll cover it a little more here in a few minutes, that it wasn't crazy about the heavier pills. Maybe that's why. We'll see. Has a 20-inch barrel. Uh, it's got an 11-degree target crown. Free floated. I did test that. I ran a dollar bill all the way up at both cold and hot. No contact with the stock on the barrel. That's great. And uh, let's see. Uh they say the stock is ergonomic and it's got a, an, an ergonomic recoil pad. I can tell you that the recoil pad worked well. It's not particularly soft, but it's kind of a heavy rifle. While the Savage Stevens website does not list the rifle weight, we put it on the scale right over there and it came in with the scope right about nine pounds. So it's kind of heavy for a 308, which is good when it comes to recoil. It's bad when it comes to lugging it up and down a mountain. Uh, one of the Features of the rifle that has got everybody all crazy about it is this 60 degree bolt throw. And while I normally show this up front, I will tell you this is a safe and empty weapon. We've cleared it a couple of times here. You'll notice it has a very short bolt throw. Doesn't interfere with the scope at all and speeds up cycling rounds, I guess. Eh, it's nice. Is it something that I would buy a rifle for? Probably not. Just keep that in mind. Uh, the website lists it with a 14 and a half inch length of pull. I'm a big guy. I had no problems with it. It's probably a little long for a youth model rifle. Let's see. What else? Okay. Yeah. It's so uh, they did do it right when they drilled and tapped the receiver for Savage 110 uh, style scope mounts, which 
is a great feature, but is completely irrelevant, at least in my case, because it came pre-equipped with a steel Picatinny rail. That's really nice. Not only was it already installed, but it's a steel one. It's not an aluminum one that's going to get boogered up. Now, some people do not like a full rail across the top of their action on a bolt action rifle. If it's a blind magazine, you got to feed them in from the top model. I am one of those people. However, this one does have a proprietary uh, single stack three round magazine. Try to do that without banging it around, making a bunch of noise there. Sorry, folks. Uh, because it has a box magazine, you don't have to feed it from the top. So having the rail across the top is perfect. It gives you a lot more options with how you're going to mount your scope. We mounted two scopes on it today. Both of them worked really well. More on that in a separate video we're working on concurrently with this one. One more feature that they list on the website for the rifle is they say it has a crisp trigger. Oh, boy, let me tell you what. They and I have two completely different definitions for the word crisp. Um, the trigger was not great, and it's a little bit SpongeBobby. Uh, I did a short video earlier today. I'll post that up here. I did three trigger pulls. They were all over five pounds. I think the median was 5.9 or five pounds, nine ounces. A little heavy for what I like on a bolt action rifle. We're going to weigh that trigger pull again now that we've put about 100 rounds through the gun. Speaking of the 100 rounds that we put through the gun, I'm going to be reading here. So uh, pardon me if I look down. We took it out to the range today and we tested 10 different varieties of ammunition through this rifle. You'll see the boxes sitting out here, folks. These are all ammunition that we took out to the range with us today. Some of these ammunitions were provided by one of you. So if you're looking for a way that you might help us out here on the channel to keep content rolling, ammunition costs money. Our buddy Joe sent us a couple of boxes. Thanks for that, Joe. We do appreciate it. All right. So. Uh, getting on with what we did here, I'll put it up over here on this side, I think. We zeroed our rifle with Federal Power Shock 150 grain ammunition. Real quick, Federal Power Shock 150 and Federal Non-Typical 150, they're one in the same. I, I got that from Federal. They sent it here on an email to me. I noticed that they shot exactly the same, got to looking at them. I said, hey, these are the same. Reached out to Federal. They confirmed, in fact, they are just different packaging. So just know that if you're looking for ammo, say you've got the 150 non-typicals or what you've got your rifle sighted in for, but all you can find is power shock, you should be good to go without making any adjustments. I chose the 150 power shock for the sight in ammunition for the rifle because my other 308 rifle really likes it and it's readily available. I also really like Remington core locked 150s, probably more than this rifle did. We'll cover that in a minute but I was having a hard time finding them. I only had this one box of them, so I decided to go ahead and do the sight in with the Federal 150s. The first group I shot with them was 1.65 inches. If you look at that round at the bottom, folks, I felt it when I pulled the trigger, the really heavy trigger. I pulled that one a little bit, and it's reflected on the target. That was with the Brushline Pro Scope. When I swapped scopes midway through the range session, I shot another zero group with the Federal 150s and it cleaned up to about 1.3 inches. With my other 308 Savage rifle, the Axis that we've done several videos on here on the channel, that ammunition, let me try that in English, that ammunition shoots really tiny groups. So I think once we get the trigger cleaned up on this one a little bit, we'll be good to go with it. So I'm gonna stick with that as a baseline. We also tested uh, right here, you'll see Federal Fusion, 150, 165, and 180 grain ammunition. The 150 shot a mediocre 1.9 inch group. The 165 shot a really good one inch group. We almost got under a minute of angle, but looking at it, it's a one inch group. And something that has seemed to be kind of consistent with the rifles I've tested it in, the 180 grain fusion was a really bad group. That was the worst of the day, folks, 2.6 inches. Now, I'll give you the caveat. I had a guy shooting a short-barreled AR in the next booth over from me, and he was just hammering them out there. 
and it was causing my table to shake a little bit. That's what you get when you're shooting on a public range. I had to take what I could get. They were busy out there today, folks, and it kind of slowed down what we were doing. But the 180s didn't group well, and they haven't grouped well in two other rifles that we've tested them on, so I didn't bother reshooting that group. Moved on to the Federal 165 Vital Shock. I think that's this one right over here. That one gave us our best of the day 0.75 inch group right up there. Uh, let's see, where are they? Over here on the bottom below the core lock, I had Winchester PowerPoint 150s. They strung a little bit and it went 1.2 inches. Again, that could have possibly been me. One thing that I noticed about the Winchester PowerPoint as opposed to the Federal 150s is there was a pretty significant shift in point of impact. That's important when you're changing ammunition. All right, so I moved on over here on the top. You'll see the Hornady uh, Precision Hunter 178 grain ELDX bullet. Those are supposed to be, uh, you know, high speed, low drag, uh, really, really high BC on the G7 on those. Again, remember the guy with the short barreled AR? Yeah. I was trying to shoot. He was shooting like crazy. He was like double tapping and doing crazy stuff right next door to where I was at. And the first group with those was 1.55 inches. I know he was shaking my table a little bit. So I went ahead and reshot that group and I got 1.05. So it was just over an inch, but not by much. I think after we do a trigger job on this rifle, we'll be able to get those down under an inch too. I moved on to the Hornady Custom SST 150s and I got a 0.95 out of those. So those did really good. Now I was a little disappointed with my Remington Core Lock. Just over 1.5 MOA, 1.52 inches was what I was able to get out of this rifle with that. Now also kind of important, not a huge deal, but might have had something to do with group size going on. Most of these groups were fired on a warm barrel. I was trying to give it five minutes in between groups, but folks, I was on a public range. I had to work around what was going on. And I was out there for four hours shooting this rifle to get these groups. So just know that if you had a cold rifle, maybe some of the groups would have been a little better, but I think the trigger probably had more to do with it than the heat of the barrel. I never did let it get very hot. Uh, moving on, the last ammunition we tried was normal white tail. Uh, 150 grains, those came in just under an inch. They shot really well. So out of the 10 varieties that we shot, four of them were sub MOA. This was on a brand new rifle and this was switching scopes around and dealing with the jack wagon next door to us. Yeah, jack wagon! That was just playing with his AR, which don't get me wrong, I love it when people play with their guns, but it's kind of a pain in the neck when you're right next door shooting $40 a box 308 trying to get groups for a YouTube review. So just keep that in mind. It was going on in the background. Kids are always excited about their new toys. I'm no different, but oh man, let me get this thing out of here. 100% empty, folks. This rifle is probably fast tracking to become one of my favorites for a deer hunting type rifle. And I'll tell you why. It just has a really good feel to it. It's not a toy. Like if you remember back when we did our first video on the Savage Axis last year, You'll remember I complained that the stock felt like it just wasn't meant for a full-size man. Not an issue with this rifle. The, the feel of this thing is just fantastic. It presents well for me. Uh, it's got a little bit of an elegant look with this nice Turkish walnut stock. With an MSRP coming in just under 500 bucks, folks, I can tell you, you would not see wood on an American-made rifle like this under maybe... 750, 800 bucks, probably more realistically a grand. So yes, it is imported, but I think they did a fantastic job uh, with the overall build quality on this thing. Throughout all of the testing that we did on the range, we had zero malfunctions. You'll notice here that ejection was really good and solid on the rifle. The magazine, if you want to nitpick things, you'll notice the magazine sticks out the bottom a little bit. 
but I really don't think it would be an issue if you had it slung over your shoulder. Uh, I would prefer if the magazine was flush fit to the bottom of the uh, stock. Speaking of the bottom of the stock, we have a nice flat spot here. So if you have like one of those nice uh, BOG cradles to uh, to sit it in, you know, if you're out on, on uh, a tripod or whatever for trying to get a distance shot, you have a nice solid flat base on this rifle. It came pre-equipped with Uncle Mike style sling swivel. So you could go to Walmart and grab yourself a sling for 20 bucks and you wouldn't be adding a significant amount of weight or uh, cost to the rifle. And that's really the greatest part about this. They managed, I picked, I picked this one up for $3.99. It came with the, uh, with the scope mount base pre-installed. Uh, sling swivels are pre-installed. It's already free floated. It has a pretty decent, it's kind of a hard pad, but with the weight, and everything it wasn't bad at all i'm not going to change it it's just a 308 they don't kick too terribly bad to begin with although kelly and his savage 110 might disagree with me this one is heavy enough that it's just really a non-issue if i had to complain about anything at all with this rifle i'm a little bit of a trigger snob the rifle is advertised as having a crisp trigger not so much. The trigger sucks on this rifle, and I've already been looking into it. There's some people talking about it already. I'm going to wait till somebody like maybe M Carbo comes out with a good trigger uh, tuning kit for this rifle, and then we're going to do it, and we will revisit uh, that here on the channel. With that being said, uh, after I did the video earlier, it was just a little short that I did showing the trigger pulls. I decided that I was going to retest the trigger pull after having it at the range of, uh, and shooting a few rounds through it. So I'm going to do that right now and we'll see what we get. Okay, and while we have already double checked and triple checked that this is an empty rifle, it is pointed in a safe direction. It couldn't hurt anything if there were something in it at this point. But I'm going to get my Wheeler Engineering uh, trigger pull gauge here. Uh, Wheeler is an American outdoor brand. They do sponsor our channel, but I bought this a couple of years ago with my own money. I believe in it as a strong product and, and, uh, you know, so if, if they had provided it for me, I'd let you know, but I paid for this and I would buy it again if I had to tomorrow. So yeah, that first pool, I don't know if you can see that there is 5.5. We'll go ahead and do two more. Now all you have to do is raise the bolt handle and put it back down and it resets the trigger. Yeah, 514. Uh, it's just shooting 100 rounds through it. And yes, I did lubricate it. That I didn't clean it yet, but I did lubricate it from the box before I took it to the range. Just so you know, I put a little bit of rim oil on the bolt and worked it. Well, there I got one that was 4.8, 4.76, so 4.8. So those three together, uh, we got an average of 5.3. A little heavy. It's a little bit spongy. The trigger could be better. Everything else is pretty good. And one other feature, just because I forgot to mention it earlier, is it does have a three-position uh, safety on it. And when the rifle's cocked, if you pull the safety all the way back, you cannot raise the bolt handle. If you put it in the middle position, you can raise it to clear the rifle without the trigger being able to function. It won't go there. And then if you push it all the way forward, the trigger will fire. So uh, that's important to some people. I, I try to keep this and this, keep the safety up here. But I know that a manual safety on a hunting rifle is important to some folks. This has gone on long enough, so I'm going to open up the floor to you folks. The comment section is open. Please let me know what you think about the Savage Stevens 334 rifle. Maybe you got one of these from Santa Claus. Maybe you're thinking about getting one with your tax return. Regardless, I think it's a solid value. The trigger needs a little work, but even with the crummy trigger, we got four sub MOA groups, and the rest of the groups just weren't really that bad for a budget tier rifle. We're going to cover the optics that are on top of these more in separate videos. But again, a big shout out to American Outdoor Brands and Crimson Trace for helping us to get this out for you. And to viewers like Joe that helped us out with the ammunition. Take care, folks. God bless.